Hey everybody, my name is Mark Simmer. I work for the Minnesota Small Business Assistance Office, part of the uh, DEED Agency, Department of Employment and Economic Development. We have created this call, which will go uh, once a month on the second Tuesday of every month from 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, as you've seen in our bulletin, we describe this as a platform to highlight topics and be able to ask people questions, whether it's your peers or experts, those experts being us at DEED and also our resource partners that are spread around the state. Today, we're going to kick it right off directly. We are going to cover the new upcoming program, uh, the Paid Family and Medical Leave. We have the director here with us, Greg Norfleet. Uh, Greg comes to the role after serving in senior leadership for multiple family-focused state agencies in Massachusetts, including as a deputy director for operation, uh, operations in the state's PFML leave program or PFML program. He most recently served as the Chief Operating Officer for the Massachusetts uh, Department of Early Education and Care, and we would like to introduce him. So please, Greg, go ahead. Thank you so much, Mark, and um, thank you all for uh, letting me come in today. I'm really excited to uh, present with you all and uh, to hear some of your questions about the program. Um, so I've got a quick deck uh, that we're gonna walk through. Um, Can folks see that? Uh, folks see the slides okay? Yes. Great. Um, so, uh, paid family and medical leave. Uh, first off, what is it? Um, it's a program uh, that is going to provide access to paid leave for certain key life events. Uh, it includes both employment protections and when taking leave under the law and financial benefits uh, for folks that are out on leave to be able to make ends meet while they're away from work. Um, Mass or Minnesota is going to be the 13th state to implement paid leave. Sorry, I'm trying to get through the animation here, um, but it's this is a common benefit that's uh, throughout the rest of the world um, where only seven countries worldwide do not have some sort of paid family leave program. Um, but states that have implemented this program have seen a lot of positive outcomes for both families and for employers. Uh, you do see stronger employee intent retention. Uh, folks come back from their leave after a serious healthcare condition. Uh, better health and development outcomes for children and higher labor market attachment for women and labor force participation generally, as well as greater economic security for families. But let's get into the details a little bit about what the program actually looks like. Um, what is covered? There's two different components, family leave and medical leave. Family leave uh, includes bonding, which is when you're welcoming a new child to your family, uh, either through birth, adoption, foster care, caring uh, for a family member. Uh, this could be that is experiencing a health care condition. Uh, this could be that your family member has a cancer diagnosis and you need to be their transportation to uh, chemotherapy appointments. Safety leave. Uh, this is for supporting uh, survivors of domestic abuse, sexual assault or stalking. Um, we're going to be the fourth state in the country to offer a safety leave program, as well as active duty leave, uh, which is leave that results out of uh, military service or active duty service. The other type of leave is medical, uh, with uh, helping your own medical condition. Uh, there's each type of leave, you are eligible for up to 12 weeks, but in aggregate, you're limited to 20 weeks within a benefit year. So after we know what is covered, who is covered, almost every Minnesota employer is covered. If you have one FTE working in Minnesota, you're required to participate. Um, and small employers are not exempted from this program. Uh, organizations that are exempt from programs like UI are also included in the statute. Um, this applies to all W-2 employees. Um, any individual who receives a W-2 form from to, for services performed in the state, typically, uh, if you pay on insurance ins uh, for an insurance unemployment insurance uh, for an individual, they're likely covered by the paid leave program as well. Uh, individuals also have the opportunity to opt into the program. If you're paid through a 1099 or you're an independent contractor or a self-employed individual, you can opt into coverage as well. There are a couple of exclusions, um, self-employed and independent, uh, self-employed individuals and independent contractors are not included as a default in the program, um, but they are able to opt in. 
Uh, the other ex uh, statutory exemption is for seasonal employees working in the hospitality industry. Um, we're going to be providing a lot more detail about that particular exemption in the future, closer to implementation of the program. So when somebody is out on leave, uh, there's two parts. First, they're receiving partial wage replacement. Our program uh, pays up to 90% wage replacement while you're out on leave with a maximum value of $1,337 per week, which is tied to the statewide average weekly wage. This is a progressive wage replacement program, meaning that folks at the lower end of uh, income are have their income replaced at a higher rate than higher earners. Um, the other portion of the pro program is job protections. This is an expansion upon FMLA. Now, I know the audience today is with small employers, but if you have heard of FMLA, uh, it's the federal leave program that offers uh, job protections for this a very similar suite of situations. Um, under this program, retaliation and interference is pro prohibited from employers. Uh, you cannot have employees sign a waiver of rights and employers must continue to offer health insurance while an individual is out on leave. In terms of timelines and when this uh, program is going to be taking effect, um, you can see a lot is going live in 2026. Uh, payroll deductions don't start until January 1st, 2026. Benefits and leaves, applications for leaves, are not available until January 1st, 2026, as well as small business development grants and uh, payroll deductions. Um, moving closer to today, we will be taking the first quarterly wage reports um, on October of 2024. So about a year from now, uh, the first quarterly wage reports will be due. At that point, premiums are not due. Uh, We're only asking for wage reports. There will be no money being transferred to the state at that time. Um, in 2025, we'll be providing uh, private plan guidance and applications for exemptions to the program. And employers will need to notify their employees about the benefit at in early December of 2025. So you can see there's a lot of runway um, before uh, this program goes into gear, but that two years will go by fairly fast. The other point that we want to share with folks today is starting in 2026, how the program is going to be funded. Uh, it's a, a total premium currently tagged at 0.7% of wages. The total premium rate is, a, is compromised of a family premium and a medical premium. Going back to the first slide on family leave versus medical leave, 0.3% goes to fit print to family, 0.4% goes to medical, and then 50% of each premium can be deducted from employee, employee pay. Um, employers may choose to submit or may choose to uh, take less than 50% of the contribution out of employee pay, but they cannot take more. And finally, employers with fewer than 30 employees are entitled to a reduced premium. Um, so smaller employers do have a wage offset under the law uh, where you won't pay the full uh, premium. Um, with that, I know that was kind of rapid fire uh, information about the program, but we do have a little bit of time for questions as well. Thank you, Craig. I am going to see if I can drop this one in the chat while I'm speaking and then probably just read it. Also, I had someone um, uh, drop this question in uh, earlier this week. Does it matter how many employees we have? Do you have to have a certain amount of employees or does it even matter regarding this? How does an employer know if employees are not going to take advantage of it? And what happens if they do use this um, does it start over the following year? So a lot of okay. questions. So I, I heard three questions there. Uh, yes. First off, uh, the minimum size of an employer to be subject to the law. Um, there is no minimum size for an employer to be subject to paid leave. Uh, if you have any employees being paid with the W-2, they are covered by the program. Um, so there is no minimum size. Uh, the second question was around uh, if how will an employer know when an individual uh, yes. applies for the program? Is that right? Yes. 
Yes. Um, so within the statute, an employee is required to go to their employer first, 60 days in advance of taking a leave or as soon as practicable in an emergency situation. Um, we will have more information about uh, benefits administration closer to implementation of the process, but uh, we we know that employees and employers do need visibility into uh, leave behavior, so we will be accounting for that. Um, and then the last question was, I think it was on uh, leave allotment over a year, right? Correct. What happens if if the employee, uh, if they use it, does it start over the following year? Great. Um, so the program operates on what is called a uh, rolling forward basis um, on a benefit year, uh, which means that you have 52 weeks from the start of a benefit year, uh, from 52 weeks from your date of first absence, to expend your allotment of 20, a maximum of 20 weeks of leave during that time. After the 52 weeks passes, you're now entitled to the next benefit year. So your allotment resets. Um, so it's not on a calendar year basis. It's not on a fiscal year basis. It's on a year from the first date of absence in which somebody is allowed to take that leave. Okay, very clear answer. We have another question here. Greg, is the employee or the employer paying for the tax, or is it a shared tax? Um, thank you for the question. Um, it is a shared tax, um, and as we mentioned, uh, it is split between employers and employees 50-50. Um, but for small employees, for small employers uh, with under 30 employees, they will not have to pay the full premium. Um, there's a wage offset. Um, in the bill that allows for a reduced premium for small employers. Okay, excellent. Um, this question will come from uh, another person that I spoke to earlier this week and and myself. We've I've had some uh, questions and some interest in learning about the ESST, the Earned Sick and Safe Time Leave, that will be uh, beginning in January, January 1st of 2024. How do these two programs work or how do they not work together? Um, so Mark, um, the ESST program is administered through the Department of Labor and Industry. Um, while the programs are both passed during the same legislative session, uh, we'll be providing more information about the intersection between those programs closer to implementation. I do know that, that, uh, that ESST goes live on January 1st, but the Department of Labor and Industry is probably better positioned to answer those questions directly. Yeah, and I, th I, th I thought so. They have a, a very good website uh, posted. I just dropped a link in for that. And Greg, we're going to stick with you. We've got more questions. How will this align with STD? Short term disability. OK, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, we will be providing more information about the intersection of uh, paid leave benefits with existing employer benefits. But that relationship is something to start thinking about today. Um, we know that employers do like do offer uh, competitive packages of benefits to their employees, and we're seeking to be able to allow employers to be able to uh, continue to provide uh, top flight benefits for their employees. Um, but we also are going to limit the uh, total wage replacement to 100% of your average weekly wage. Um, there's going to be a lot. This gets into a very complex area of offsets of yes. what counts yes. uh, against uh, the benefit payment and what doesn't. But I do promise that we will be providing uh, significantly more information about how these benefits interact with one another closer to implementation. Excellent. I mean, that's that's the best you can do is, is as this is progressing. We do have another question. It happens to be to deal with the ESST. Um, Someone, I will answer that directly, maybe after the meeting to see what, what I can answer for that person. And also there is, um, like I said, that we dropped the link in for the Department of Labor and Industry, the Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry uh, that has information on that. Uh, we also have some more questions in here, Greg. Uh, do employers have to apply for the reduced premium under 30 employees or is that automatic? Uh, that will be automatic. Okay. Um, if a person is out on leave, is their payment coming from the state? 
Yes, uh, the pay the benefit payment will be paid from the state. OK. Awesome, we've answered those questions. Um, I don't see any other questions regarding this right away, so I would like to uh, ha uh, hand it off to uh, Neela Malgard, our uh, director for the Office of Small Business and Innovation. Please go ahead, Neela. Um before, before we drop, oh, I just want to say sure. thank you again for uh, inviting oh. <laughs> me here today uh, to be able to talk about the program. And uh, we really look forward to engaging with you all uh, further as the program, as the implementation effort continues. Um, so thank you all for uh, your attention today. Well, Greg, oh, and I th think there are a couple more questions here, unless it was touched on in, in one of your responses. Sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. There's one, there's one, does this apply to part-time workers? Uh, yes, it does. Um, it applies to anyone being paid via W-2 in the state. Okay. And then I think there's just, uh, there's right. just a new one from Kevin in regards to ESST. Has there been a determination on the accrual rate for 100% commissioned employees? Yep. And, and again, I, that's the ESST. That, you did ask that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a similar. similar program through DLI. Greg, we don't expect you yeah, to be able to answer it. those those questions on that. Um, uh, tons of questions are coming in. I, yeah. I don't know how far we, we want to go in this, but Greg, if you want to take maybe three or four more. We can yeah, let's do, let's do uh, a few more rapid fire. Sure. Mark, um, why don't you manage the questions? That'd be great. Uh, if the payment is coming from the state, how do we as a company collect the health insurance and other premiums during an absence? Um, more information about payments is going to be available closer to implementation, um, but uh, that's being worked out through the implementation effort. Fair enough. Uh, will we get uh, into six-ish months prior to the start of the program so we can address benefits as needed to avoid unnecessary overlap in this program? Can you say it again? I'm looking, sorry. Yeah, I think I think the person is asking about like a a bumper period. Will they get uh, at least six months prior to the start of the program so they can adjust their benefits as needed? Oh, absolutely. Um, we are going to be um, communicating early and often about the program, um, and we'll be providing a lot more um, tactical advice um, in the next year about how these and keeping in mind that the program does not launch until January first, twenty twenty six. OK, uh, does the taxability follow uh, Minnesota SUI? Uh, oh, is this uh, Minnesota State Unemployment Insurance? Is that what that is? I, that's what I would uh, assume that is, yes. Yeah. Um, so taxability is addressed in the statute that it is taxable under the state, but the federal government has yet to make a, a determination on the taxability of paid leave benefits. Um, so we will account for uh, being able to withhold federal taxes, but we still do not have guidance from the IRS on how they are going to treat these benefits. Gotcha. How about this, Greg? I read one more question. Hopefully you can answer it. Then I will take, I will collect the other questions and can I send them in to your, your office uh, to get a response? And, and I, I'd be glad to, to send those responses out. Absolutely. Okay. Will the state of Minnesota tell each business what is owed per employee each year for their part of the premium? Will they also give the business the required, the requirement amount each year after evaluating the quarterly wage reports? Um, so they are quarterly wages uh, collected on a quarterly basis. Um, so your tax liability will be determined on a quarterly basis along with your filing. Is that helpful? I hope so. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure to uh, I'll make sure to grab all the, the, the questions uh, that were directed to you. I can put those in print format and then if you you can take your time to take a look at these and then um, You've already answered some, and then the other ones we will uh, have you give an answer, and I will I will get those out to people. So awesome. I I appreciate I appreciate you being here today. That's great. So Neela, over to you. Yeah, I just want to thank Greg, you know, for being here for sharing his insight, and uh, you know, as as questions arise, he's a colleague, and and we can reach out and get the answers that our small businesses need. So thank you, Greg, for your time, and we'll have you back uh, again in 2024 when when there's even more out uh, and more information to share with our businesses and business community. 
Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Um, in, in addition to uh, our gratitude to Greg, I want to thank Mark Simmer for hosting these calls. He is a, a, a leader in our small business assistance office and shares his expertise with our small businesses and entrepreneurial support orgs every day. Um, and so thank you, Mark, for, for hosting these. I also want to thank our other partners that make this call possible. We partner with the Minnesota Chamber, the SBA, our SBDC offices, and the Better Business Bureau. So the remainder of this call, um, as it was stated in our invitation, is for you, those that are attending, to ask questions, um, whether it's to your peers or to others on the calls that help businesses with technical assistance and support. Um, we just want to make sure that every month there's a, a, a ability to check in and ask questions, share concerns, ideas that our, the state and our partners uh, should know or can help you with. Is there anything else pressing besides what we've just discussed? And thank you, Mark, for your uh, ability to get some more answers from Greg and, and get that out to the group. Certainly. Also, is there other topics that you'd like us to, to spotlight in future months? This call is for all of you. Um, so we want to make sure that we're, we're bringing in speakers that are relevant and are, are, are needed right now for your business. And let's see if I can get to this question. Um, yeah, I'm trying to look at the questions, Neela and everyone, and just see what's e ESST and the uh, paid medical leave program. Um, um, so there's a direct response to you, Neela, for, for other ideas or other topics. I, I don't see anything that's, okay. that's different yet. Um, it, in I this last question, right, if there's others on the call that know how they are going to be handling absolutely. the absences from work, please, please do share with your peers. You can just come off the microphone and, and share your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Is there anything from our partners, Minnesota Chamber, SBA, SBDC, that you'd like to share with the group too? Sarah, did you have a question? No. No, okay. All right, thanks for the suggestion in the chat. Is there any other um, some other resources that our partners would like to share that businesses and entrepreneurial support orgs would benefit from. I can put some uh, links in. I'm always happy for an opportunity to share some of the great things that are happening within Deed. Uh, we have a statewide calendar for startups and small businesses that everyone can use and add events to. Hopefully it's a one-stop shop for our businesses to find out networking opportunities, training opportunities, events. So I'll put that link in the chat. Um, we also, in addition to the um, the this call every month, we host Welcoming Wednesdays uh, in every corner of the state where we have business um, advisors, consultants that are there to meet with businesses, whether you just have a business idea or you're looking to grow a business or facing challenges, um, they're there to help you and looking for more sites across the state to be able to host those events. Um, I'll also put in a, a resource of some of our funding and other programming that might you might uh, find valuable. Yes, I see a hand raised. It's a quick question. Um, so I'm Raghu Chijarla, High Cloud Solutions. We are based in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, we are a small business here. So obviously this is going to be um, increased operating expenses uh, for small business like us. Um, and when we are responding to RFPs with the state and local government agencies, we are competing with um, other non-Minnesota businesses. Uh, so if um, I don't think it's going to be level playing because our cost is going to be higher, but we are competing with um, uh, non-Minnesota um, businesses where their costs are lesser. So uh, so how are there any considerations to help 
um, small businesses with this aspect are making making us a level playing field for small businesses here in Minnesota. Um, anyone want to answer that? <laughs> I think the, the, the questions are still related to uh, this topic, which, you know, I, I want to make sure Greg has time to answer and others have time yep. to answer. Um, but we are going to gather your those questions. I see more coming in the chat. We'll gather these questions and it and it's going to help um, Greg and his team and our agency uh, better answer these these really important questions for you. Um, and then we we uh, have uh, Mark, you have their email lists, right? That we can send out responses to. Yeah, absolutely. I'll either um, put it out in a bulletin. Uh, I've done that in the past with other meetings. The bulletin will come out like a notice section, but it will list the questions and then the the answer. So I'm going to take most of the questions off the uh, transcription. So we we will do that. Yep. I do see we're getting more questions on the ESST as far as when did that go into place. Just a, a quick reminder for that, the um, employee sick and safe time that goes into effect January 1st of 2024. Greg, who was talking about the Minnesota um, program that is called the Paid Family and Medical Leave, PFML program, that deed is standing up, that goes into effect in 2026. Um, there has been information out on the, the programs, whether it's through news sources or, or postings. Um, I know some people had went out and looked at the uh, Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry website. I didn't answer all their questions. They do have an email contact uh, at, their, at that uh, landing page for ESST, and they have a phone number. I've already directed people to, to go there. So yes they are um they're coming up one, one is coming up in 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 not not that far in the future um those those bills were passed and uh that that's what we know as far as when they when they go into effect uh, i see a question here yes that's what i was going to think of doing is see if we can find someone from dli to come in and I've, I've worked with some other people let's talk about the essst as as soon as we can um yeah i will work on that i'll write myself a note right now that that's that's what we are going to try and uh help uh small business owners um get some some answers to and it these programs as far as i know cover uh most most em uh, em employment situations I think um, Oscar has a question. Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Oscar. I work with uh, Luxury Council here in South Minneapolis. Um, and I was just wondering if I could suggest a topic for f a future uh, meeting. Sure. Of course. I was, I, yeah, I was wondering if, if there, was a, there was a possibility to talk about uh, safety issues around uh you know around minneapolis more specifically south minneapolis uh and homelessness and how that's affecting uh our business owners thank you yeah thank you for this yet for the suggestion yeah we will take that in yeah Any other questions uh, that your business is facing or you need a resource and you don't know where to go or anything else that our um, support organizations would like to share with attendees or our partners on the call? We allot an hour, but we don't need to take the full hour. So once again, this is this is for you, the businesses and those that support the businesses to make sure that you have the answers that you need. But we're welcome. We're, we're more than happy to give you time back. Just monitoring the chat. I don't see any questions coming in there, but but certainly um, um, with with the change in seasons, uh, our office in particular is getting a lot of questions as far as you know setting up for winter, winter type of businesses, how to you know how to get those businesses up and running. Um, so uh, to share with everybody, we are seeing um, a lot of of interest in in people still starting their business and wanting wanting to to get going. 
Got a question about sharing the PowerPoint. Yes, I can do that. We will we will get the information out. Uh, I, I would say it's probably going to be better if I can grab all the questions together with uh, kind of quick answers um, that uh, Greg's program can answer uh, along with the, the slides. So we'll put that together. Shouldn't take me much longer than a, than a couple of days to to have you get that, be able to review it, certainly share it with uh, with other people too. We would appreciate that. I'm not sure how to answer this uh, question, Neela. Can we share any link that you think will help for small business? I can share about a hundred of them, but yeah, but yes, but yeah. Why don't I in our in our bulletin also kind of uh, reintroduce you to what what we do and our uh, Launch Minnesota partners do, and um, give you kind of an overview of the the basic resources that that we use and. Uh, for helping businesses. Yeah, and there is a resource guide that I just put in there, <laughs> Great. but there's been a lot of um, of uh, activity in the chat, but let me do it, put the link again. This is a resource guide. Um, it is fairly current of our funding and our resource programs um, and some of our lender lending programs right here. Ooh. Ooh. That did not go well. Let me give you the right link. Um, and so this is a nice way um, that kind of summarizes links and emails and websites that you might find of it, uh, helpful. So let me just try again here to get that in accurately. Neela, yeah. while you're, uh, while you're adding is. that, thanks, because that's a, that's a great document. Um, we've had a question in one answer. Uh, where do people, where do employers get labor law posters? Yes, they can get them from the Minnesota Chamber. Um, uh, there's a link there that they've thrown in. There are also the free posters from the Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry. Basically, if you just do even a, a broad internet search for um, Minnesota workplace posters, I'm sure that will come up. Um, one of the results will be the Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry. Uh, DLI covers uh, licensing for certain professions, but they also deal with workers' comp rules, the workplace posters, uh, labor standards. So that agency has um, a lot of of things going on in the uh, in the employment world. So that's a that's a good resource. And I just want to acknowledge we know that uh, th this new legislation causes questions for businesses. Um, some concerns for businesses. That's why we're bringing you these topics each month um, so we can share information that we know, um, answer your questions. Um, we don't have all the answers, uh, but, but we will 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 help find them or help navigate you to people that do. Yes, ab ab absolutely. Um, there was a question that came in. Will this um, the new paid family medical leave have a poster? Yes, I'm I'm assuming so. Uh, because that's going to be a, a requirement to have that. The uh, ESST, they are developing their their poster. That's the uh, uh, earn safe and sick time. So yes, DLI does a really good job grabbing all those uh, important posters and I think in about four different languages uh, for posting. So yes, you you can rely on, on us at DEED and then the Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry to provide you with as much information what you need to to do for um, uh, being an employer and giving notice to uh, to employees. Once again, if you want to share in chat or just unmute yourself, any other topics you want to hear about, any other gaps that you think uh, that you experience in our our small business ecosystem that we should be aware of or point you to a resource that you might need. Um, this is your time. Mm -hmm. uh, Neil, there was one that uh, came in. I'm just having a little trouble following the chat when the new ones pop in, but someone was asking if, they, if there's a template for uh, employment policies. If, does anyone have that or, or who mm -hmm. could provide that for someone? So if someone has some uh, some resources on that, 
we would be glad to uh, to get those out and share those. Ooh, I, I hear I hear some typing. Um, I can always find some resources around that also. Try and do that. All right. Well, um, is there any, just want to give our partners one more chance if there's any updates or events coming up or um, things that you would like to share out with the group? Um, Minnesota Chamber, SBA, SBDC, um, thank you for your partnership and helping spread the word for these monthly calls. Oh, Oscar, do you have another question? Okay. Mark, do you think we've addressed everything that's been in the chat so far? Uh, honestly, no, there's, <laughs> there are more questions <laughs> rolling in. I'm not, I'm not sure how to, to answer some of these. Um, we just need to get some more response maybe from people who have more knowledge. Some people are looking for um, some training on the uh, on the leave programs. Um, one question here is, do you know of any resources to help with the teacher staffing shortage? That's a that's a really big question. I would I would have to think about that. But if someone else has some more knowledge, please uh, share that. Um, so and these, through here. these questions are going to be very valuable for for Greg and his staff. Um, and and he they want to be active listeners and and hear your feedback. Um, so I think some of your ideas about some training sessions they're they're not currently planned, but that will be a great thing for them to incorporate as they know more. Um, so um, I, I I can guarantee you that all of your questions and comments will go to Greg and his team, um, and and uh, they will will learn from you based on your questions. Yes, and just to wrap it up, we have we have one last question here. Will you be providing answers to these questions to everyone on the call? My honest answer is we. I will try and get answers to um, all the questions. And if we don't have an answer or a resource, uh, we will try and find a, a resource for you. So yes, I'll make um, every effort to get this out as soon as possible to everybody and try and answer these, these questions. We have a lot of resource partners, so so hopefully we can get some, um, some feedback on that too. So we're, we're so also looking at it. Yeah, and and just to add to that, um, what Mark shared as we're we're looking for a place on our website too that can host the recordings, can host some of the meeting notes uh, that you can reference. Yep. So, all right. Well, we'll stay on a, a, a you know another minute in case there's more more questions in the chat. But I just want to thank all of you for attending. I know time is limited with many demands that you each face. Um, thanks again to our partners. Extra thanks to Mark uh, for hosting these calls and for, for taking the time to do this. Um, and we will see you next month on the second Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Thank you for being part of this today. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody.